Science on Surfaces, a bigger perspective on the small. So welcome to this podcast, Science on Surfaces, a bigger perspective on the small, where we zoom in on science that impacts our everyday lives. So today we'll talk about challenges that we're facing related to human global health, uh, for example, viral outbreaks and uh, cancer. And we will talk about how some of these challenges can be addressed from the perspective of surface science by studying interactions and processes taking place at surfaces and interfaces. My name is Malini Rotom, and here with me in the studio I have Professor Nam Jun Cho. You are a Nanyang Associate Professor at the School of Material Science and Engineering at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. You are also leading the uh, Engineering and Translational Science Group, where you apply engineering strategies uh, to solve human health problems uh, to impact societal needs. So welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, your research focuses on different aspects of human global health. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And for example, you work with biomaterial uh, Mm -hmm. development to access or to address biomedical challenges. Mm -hmm. And you also work with antimicrobial and antiviral strategies. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, you've recently published very promising results on uh, uh, drug candidates for therapeutic treatments of Zika uh, virus, and we will talk more about that. Okay. Uh, but first, I'm very much interested in your overall driver. Why have you decided to focus on human global health issues? Okay, that's a very good question, and then uh, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, first over, my background is uh, uh, material science and chemical engineering. Then after that, I went to the gastroenterology. And at the time of uh, uh, period when I finished my PhD, that was very rare to go to core uh, medical uh, school group. So that was the first time I went there. And then, you know, as a background of engineer, I tried to using the engineering approach to actually solve a biomedical problem. And specifically, the group I went to is they are basically doing the infectious disease. It's very different from the what I have been done previously during my PhD, surface science. Okay. But the, the very good thing is uh, uh, what I learned from the beginning is uh, I learned how do you communicate uh, first with the doctor and also how you communicate with the clinician scientists that was the beginning of this whole thing and then later on i learned that this surface science approach can be the uh, very useful for new field of uh, uh, medical science especially for infectious disease so that was the uh, beginning of my journey mm-hmm. so you saw an opportunity <coughs> to use your knowledge in this new area that's correct basically. yes, yes. Okay, so uh, in terms of the challenges that we are facing today, I mean, what, what are the challenges that you see mm-hmm. in terms of human health that we are so facing? So I- in my, that's another uh, very good question. So in my mind, and then as you heard uh, from the news, the outbreak, for example, we had a few years ago uh, Ebola outbreak, after that it's Zika outbreak, dengue outbreak, you know, those infectious disease outbreak is on and off. The, the, the problem is uh, people aware of it when the outbreak happened and then after they disappear, they uh, tend to forget. Mm-hmm. But those outbreak, I believe, it can be come again and again. Mm-hmm. Once this outbreak really spread globally, mm-hmm. that might be the uh, big problem. So mm-hmm. I urge it to actually using my technology or my approach to try to develop the new solution because conventional solution Mm. is not winning Mm. yeah exactly so uh, i noted on your website Mm -hmm. that you mentioned this uh, four-step strategy to Mm -hmm. address these problems so could you describe that a bit okay so fundamentally uh we're um in working as a uh, professor 
at the Nanyang Technological University, mm-hmm. and then this is the government support research institution. Mm-hmm. So all the research funding is taxpayer money. So you know the philosophy is from the beginning with how we can effectively using the resource we have in order to translate this knowledge to the real world problem. So that was the uh, common theme I mm-hmm. have. That's why I named my group as uh, Engineering in Translational Science. Mm-hmm. That's the my group name. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and what we do is the fourth step is uh, in order to effectively doing research, mm-hmm. the first we need to design or we need to identify what is the uh, <coughs> imminent problem we have. So that's I basically define the problem. And then after that, you need to design the platform to solve it. So in there, the platform meaning it's a surface science platform that is my expertise. Mm. So conventional way of doing science in, for instance, biology mm-hmm. or other biomedical science. And then beyond that, we um, take a look at the uh, solvent base or solution based those biology assay and take a look at that approaches then i convert those approach to more sensitive more viable more translatable way to do the uh, science that's the platform design mm. so once we do the platform design so one very different thing as an engineering approach what we do is uh, we define perimeter instead of uh, we basically uh, relatively measure what biologists do, positive mm. control, negative control. Mm. So what we do is we define very, very clear parameter. That is the parameter definition. Then by that fundamental study, we collect the knowledge. Then we basically solve the uh, real world problem by using those information. That's the fourth step we are taking uh, account into. Okay, so it's it's the engineering approach to sort of break down a real world problem to something that you can address that's with uh, with the surface science. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, <coughs> that's good. Um, and then the bench to bed side is something that you mentioned. What mm-hmm. was that? Because that's sort of starting at the bench. I'm thinking of the lab bench and bedside is the patient. Yeah, that's correct. So basically, ultimate goal is uh, we don't want to stop our science application just in in vitro or in vivo. We want to actually translate that knowledge to the uh, human health problem mm. so that thereby they have a uh, uh, societal impact. Mm. So every focus we do is uh, we want to go one step ahead. Mm. So, you know, typically if you in the engineering room doing the bioengineering, they doing in vitro and in vivo, it's a small animal study. So mm. we don't limit our effort, mm. only test for the uh, in vivo small animal. We go beyond that. That is what we, uh, what do you mean by bench to bed side and then we want to develop, you know, real uh, mm. human, uh, problem solution yeah. so the goal with all your lab work is that it will actually impact a human being that's right in the end that's correct yeah so let's talk about the zika project that i briefly mentioned um so in 2016 i know that the world health organization uh, declared zika an international emergency mm-hmm. and the disease is still a threat mm-hmm. So why did you start to work on this particular? Because you mentioned other diseases as well. So why did you choose Zika? So uh, that was the one of the model systems. So, you know, from 2007, uh, we identified this antiviral peptide that can lysis the virus. That was the beginning of our journey. And what does that mean, lysis the virus? Lysis virus meaning is this uh, a peptide specifically target lipid envelope of the virus Mm -hmm. and then they can rupture the virus in a very certain uh, fashion very specific way so and then later on last 10 plus years we basically study using surface sensitive technique including the qcmd lspr or other simulation technique try to find out 
how this peptide interact with the lipid envelope. Mm. That was the uh, biophysical way of uh, doing or, or performing the experiment. With the knowledge, we are able to design mm. new way of uh, uh, design, new class of uh, uh, peptide, various mm. peptide. Mm. And then finally, uh, after I joined uh, to the uh, Singapore 2011, we start doing various of, uh, in vitro work, the meaning is a cell culture work based on the knowledge we collect mm. using surface science. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of the, our system. And then we realized that a lot of virus contain lipid envelope. So mm -hmm. lipid envelope is kind of war of the virus, a certain class of the virus. Mm -hmm. And then we start working with the uh, you know, blood bone, which is Hep C, Hepatitis C virus, mm -hmm. and other viruses, the uh, mosquito bone virus, flabby virus, mm -hmm. class of a mosquito bone virus, that is including dengue, Zika, yellow fever, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. the, and we're not limited our research only for the Zika, but we also doing the other targeting virus. But we realized that this peptide can sense the curvature of those lipid envelopes. The size of the virus is typically below 100 or 120 nanometer. Mm -hmm. This peptide can selectively sensing those lipid curvature. Then they can lyse it and then it come up to be the, the Zika is one of the very good candidate. Hepatitis C is another one and dengue, yellow fever, and so on. So in vitro wise, we test about 18, 19 different virus. Okay. And then it's working against that. It's what we call broad spectrum fashion. Mm -hmm. That is only for the in vitro, the meaning is the cell culture system. That's what we've done. Mm -hmm. After that, we did the uh, animal model study with the collaboration with the Brazil at the time of uh, outbreak. They looking for the uh, treatment because it was uh, uh, emergency status at the time. So we quickly get a, uh, a high attention with uh, our collaborator because they want to try the new way of uh, solve this problem. So, you know, with our collaborator help, we are able to do the animal model study. And then the, the very important in this particular case, it was uh, uh, published in the Nature Material paper and then highlighted in the same journal and the broadly. The reason being that uh, this newly designed class of peptide are able to cross the CNS, which is blood brain barrier, mm -hmm. to actually diminish the virus, mm -hmm. a number of virus in brain as well. Okay. as the serum and then body and so on. So it's, uh, it's, uh, we developed a very promising result and then we uh, published it in 2018. Okay, so you mentioned the, uh, that the virus size was 120 nanometers in this case. Is that a normal size for viruses or is it just a specific category? Like you mentioned you had 18, 19, uh, viruses that you are testing, is that the, then the size that is the limiting factor or what is the limiting factor? Okay, that's a very good question. The one of the limiting factor is the size below those ranges in here, particularly 120 nanometer. Yes. And the many class of virus mm -hmm. is uh, within those range below 120 nanometer. For example, the hepatitis C virus is 50 nanometer. So if you have uh, those small size of the best uh, size of the virus with the lipid envelope, mm -hmm. so lipid envelope has a certain uh, curvature, mm -hmm. and then this peptide sensing those curvature and target very specifically so that they don't target the cell membrane, mm -hmm. which is 10 micrometer above, mm -hmm. and then for the peptide perspective, mm -hmm. those cell membrane is a flat surface okay. from the virus perspective. Okay. However, those small virus particles below 120 nanometer and have a curvature and then different tension, so we believe that that is one of the mechanisms. Okay. So that's why it's working against broad spectrum of the virus and those classes. For instance, some virus have those small sizes, but it's not uniform. 
which is the case of influenza virus. Okay. Sometimes the virus particle they aggregate together uh -huh. and then have a different shape uh -huh. and then different size uh, rather than the uniform size. Then it does not work in those settings. So we have a very uh, specified condition uh, which this drug working against. Okay. And then size is a very important parameter in this particular case. Okay. So so you're talking specifically about this engineered peptide that mm -hmm. you have engineered and then could you engineer a peptide that would work for different curvature? So we believe so. We design a lot of different class of peptides right now. This is one of the peptides, the model peptide we are using. It. And then we using the D isomer versus L isomer so that can promote the penetration of the uh, CNS and so on. Mm. So there is a lot of work uh, we can actually do and doing it right now, research perspective. But it's very exciting new class of peptide, mm. I would say, compared with the conventional antimicrobial peptide class. Mm. So potentially you could also address additional viruses That's in the correct. future. Um, just for clarification, so you're talking about this lipid envelope. So this mm -hmm. is the sort of the, the packaging of the virus. That's it's like, correct. like a coating of the virus. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, some, some virus particles or something inside of that envelope, right? Mm -hmm. And I like this description that you've had. It's like pricking a balloon. Mm -hmm. um, so could you describe that a bit in more detail, how it actually works on the peptide? So in, in, in the uh, in biophysics paper, we using uh, lipid basket as a model system because we know how you design the lipid basket with the same composition of the virus. So in doing those study, we realizing that this peptide assembled together, for example, four peptides assembled together to start making pore formation on those very, very controlled lipid vesicles, then they can start to lyse, uh, lysing. The meaning is, the lysing is a biologic term, by the way, in engineering term is rupture. Mm -hmm. Remove the uh, lipid composition from this vesicle that create the lysis or rupture of the vesicle. Mm -hmm. So that's what we see in the biophysical setting. So we basically using this uh, surface sensitive technique to measure those process and kinetic and time variation and in, in engineering term it core parameters. Based on that, we designed the assay in vitro and in vivo assay. We tried directly with the uh, inactive virus particle. Then later on, we move it to the more complex system as a in vitro cell study with the actual virus particle. And uh, we demonstrate that even in animal, we can reduce down the viral load in the uh, animal study. That's how we actually get the whole picture. Okay. So by using these techniques to study processes at the s interface or the surface of the virus, you could realize that the AH, AH not the, the, it's the peptide, AH peptide would yes. actually prick. Yeah, lysis. Make rupture, it, make it rupture. Yeah. Okay. So initial paper was uh, we published 2007. That yeah. was uh, Jack's paper. Yeah. So in there, what we did basically, we coating the basque layer on the gold substrate and then we monitor with the QCMD technology, then we adding the peptide. You know, intact vascular or vascular absorption study, there is a certain frequency changes, which mm. is a huge frequency change of 120 hertz. Then later on, when you adding this peptide into the uh, this microfluidic chamber of uh, 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 QSense, then you see the frequency change to the 24 hertz on the gold surface. At the time, the paper we use it as a method to make bilayer mm. on gold surface for model vascular system. But if you think about this model vascular system exactly, you can translate this model vascular mm. to virus lipid envelope. That's how we actually get the idea. That's yeah. what I mean by you know this surface science yeah. can actually give you clue 
how this vesicle array can rupture at that time mm. to make bilayer that directly translate mm. to the knowledge of how lipid envelope, this age peptide target lipid envelope. Mm. So you're making the real world and that allowed you to engineer this solution. Uh, I was thinking about the um, how it works, the Zika virus. Could you when you get this bite <coughs> from the mosquito, how how does it work? So it's the uh, uh, same as all other virus. They have a certain virus life cycle. Mm -hmm. So basically the virus get into the cell membrane and then inside they doing the, uh, in this particular case, is RNA virus. So they translate, proliferate, and they budding out to the another virus. So mm -hmm. basically they infect the one cell, go to the another cell, go to the another cell spreads in the body exactly and then when you take this then this drug what would it do so what we target is basically and the entrance of this virus before they enter the cell after they putting out from the cell we reduce down to the viral load in your body system mm. so that you know the immune response can actually active from okay. that point but then infected cells mm -hmm. would they would still be they will be, but you know, Ruined. infected cell. Yeah. But you know, it's uh, depending on the viral load that you can actually sustain from the yeah. immune response system. And then what was that you said about the the um, um, passing the blood brain barrier? Mm -hmm. what, what 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 does that mean? What is the impact of that? The impact of that is uh, number one. Uh, a lot of researcher uh, develop drug or small molecule want to cross the blood brain barrier. Mm. But in open case, it does not happen, and there is lots of limitations. So, a lot of a class of research field they want to develop molecule can penetrate the blood brain barrier. Mm. That's number one. Number two, in this particular case, that was the unexpected result we got, and then happened to be there is a, some class of MPPD killer peptide they can penetrate and depending on their assembly. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, in our case, it not only penetrates effectively in the blood-brain barrier without deteriorate to the CNS, but also we have uh, those efficacies uh, survived in the brain so that they can actually remove the virus particle. In this particular case, remove meant uh, the lysis mm -hmm. of the virus particle. So we can directly examine that it uh, decrease the load of the virus. Because mm. you did these mouse studies, so yes, tests on mouse mice, model study, yes. where they would actually survive then. The yes, that's the, correct. Some of them would survive. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Um, let's see. So this would then, it would be a cure, but it wouldn't be a vaccine, right? So yeah, this class is what we call, the, we can using it, this kind of class of drug as a three different type. Number one is the preprolytic. The meaning is before you go into the, the, the region in the virus epidemic happen, you can start taking it as a prevention. Okay, okay. That's the number one. Number two, even though you have it infected, you can take it as a cure. That's the treatment. Mm -hmm. Number three is we also thinking because this efficiently you can work. So we all also uh, think about sexual transmission prevention kind of way, topo uh, topical uh, skin kind of fashion you can actually apply. So like a cream exactly. on your skin or yeah, something. Especially for the uh, bloodborne virus, HIV and Hep C, and then you can actually using it in those fashion. Mm -hmm. So then, if you compare it to other um, drugs targeting viruses, mm -hmm. I mean, what is the difference between this one and, and existing? Yeah, that's a, a great question because, you know, this is a conventional infectious disease field, they basically in biology, they looking at the virus life cycle. Then they prevent those virus life cycles so that the virus cannot spread in your body. Mm -hmm. That's the conventional way. Then it, it should be the molecular specific or antibody specific and so on. Mm -hmm. So in our case, what we target 
we target lipid uh, envelope, mm. common denominator of the virus. That's what we target. That's why uh, it is a broad spectrum. Mm. And as you know, even though lipid composition changes, it doesn't really matter. If virus mutate, then certain drug doesn't work. Mm. And then they create the resistance, right? right? Because bacteria or virus can mutate. Right. So in this particular case, we are targeting the structure of the virus, mm. which is uh, one of the uh, kind is uh, lipid envelope. Uh, thereby, we do not worry about, or we, uh, I would say, we have advantages to not worry about those virus mutation because we target this uh, lipid envelope. Mm. So that's the, I believe, it's And all virus distinct. will have this envelope? No, some of the virus have the envelope, some of they don't have the envelope. Some of it's RNA virus, some of the DNA virus. We right. are targeting right now the very specific virus, mm. which has envelope, mm. the size below 150 nanometer. There is just uh, a lot of virus within those classes. Mm. Um, <coughs> so what about uh, membranes on like bacteria? Because they will also have a, a lipid membrane. Exactly. The, this whole concept is actually, you know, you can also find from the uh, bacteria case, which is antimicrobial uh, peptide, which was a very popular research subject uh, in the 80s, 70s, 90s. The reason uh, antimicrobial peptide is not working because they do not have a specificity. Mm -hmm. They working as a detergent like. For instance, melatonin in the paper we directly compare melatonin with our peptide. Mm -hmm. Melatonin can effectively destroy the membrane, not only for the virus membrane, but also for the cell membrane. Okay. Thereby it have a toxicity. So that's not good. Exactly. In our case, we have a specificity. Mm. And then nanomolar range, we can actually lysis the virus. Mm. And those nanomolar range of the peptide with a flat cell surface, it does not show any toxicity. That's why we have a very high therapeutic index in this particular case. Mm -hmm. So mechanism is different. Mm -hmm. However, you know, the bacterial cell membrane have a very specific composition and so on. And then it's depending on the positive gram, ne negative gram, they have a one bilayer or two bilayer. And then certain peptide we are working on, we believe, and mechanism of action is very, very similar because bacterial cell is a different size. Mm. Size range of uh, 600 nanometer to micrometer, mm. we can actually develop something that effectively target the bacterial cell as well, we, which we don't know the mechanism yet, mm. but we test the few of the bacteria strain it's working against. So it is a very, very exciting moment. And once again, and bacteria resistance and virus resistance is due to the those mutation of the bacteria and virus. If you target different thing, if you don't target protein or molecule, then in this particular case it's lipid mm. and shape or structure or biophysical characteristic of the lipid that basically overcome such a problem. Mm. So this could also be a way forward to solve the problem of antibiotic That's correct. resistance. That's correct. We believe so. Okay, so we've talked about uh, antiviral strategies. I know that you're also working on other uh, diseases. So mm -hmm. could you say something about that? Okay, so everything is come from the common theme of uh, uh, studying or mimicking biomembrane. You know, vascular is a one form of a membrane. Lipid bilayer is another form of membrane. The uh, today topic of uh, surface science so if you actually see it, how I developed this virus solution mechanism is from the surface science. And the next one, what we do is, can we utilizing this uh, biomimetic membrane model system 
to solve another problem. So one of the emerging area is basically I using this uh, biomembrane model system as a two different functions. One is we functionalize this biomembrane and then the other thing is we using this biomembrane as a biofolding. The meaning is resistance surface by this lipid coating. If you achieve these two goals, what you can do is basically you functionalize your biomembrane with capture specific molecule or cell. In this particular case, we put a lot of effort right now try to capture very specific cell. In this particular case, it's a circulating tumor cell. So in order to do that, we need to have an engineering platform and engineering optimization by using this uh, uh, QCMD technology to actually draw out how we can actually uniformly form the bilayer, then how much of the linker, which is in this particular case is antibody linker building block, put on the surface that we can sensitively detect with uh, a very defined the number of molecules. After that, we can actually capture the circulating tumor cell without interruption of other cell because we have to using the serum and blood in the system, which is blood contain many different cell types plus lots of uh, proteins which uh, we have to have a good selectivity. So also again this uh, surface uh, sensitive surface science technology can promote such a biologic problem. So this is the area of uh, early detection mm. of a cancer cell. Okay so this is still an early stage of the development. So how, how would this be used uh, uh, in a human? So what I'm doing right now, we design the protocol. If you see, it, there is a lot of service in the uh, biology assays available, which is uh, uh, many cases not precise enough or sensitive enough. So what I'm gonna I'm doing right now in my laboratory in collaboration with the various uh, company is we increasing we develop protocol. We develop optimization assay step in order to improve existing assay. That's the one way we're doing. And the second way is we develop the way of coating mm -hmm. the uh, lipid membrane with the various of shape and surface properties. So for instance, many of the microfluidic channel have a different material composition, for example, and the bottom part open to they make it with a uh, glass and top part either in PDMS, plastic, PMMA and so on. So you are able to actually coating the non-defect, defect free membrane thereby you can actually using those surface as a biofolding way. Mm, okay, but would you, if you had um, a patient with cancer and mm -hmm. the circulating tumor cells, mm -hmm. would you inject something or would you take the blood and flow it through to, to I mean because you want to remove those circulating mm -hmm. tumors right so in this particular case it's detection detection matter so basically I take the uh, patient blood sample mm -hmm. and then we diagon uh, diagnostic with this okay so it's, an, it's just for diagnostic exactly it's okay. diagnostic because early detection is everything to cure the right. first step to cure the cancer patients yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two very important areas, but very different in a way, although they, they have the, the membrane, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. lipid membrane in common. Um, so what are your plans for the future then? Or do you have any new, new diseases? Uh, thinking about any new diseases or will you just expand your work mm -hmm. in these two areas? Or So this is a very interesting area. In addition to that, we design the biomembrane, we are fascinating about biomimetic system, which is in this particular case is uh, mimic biomembrane. <coughs> Conventional way of creating biomembrane is called 
vesicle fusion. So you have to have a vesicle in order to make the membrane, which is hampered by the uh, complexity of making the certain condition vesicle, which thereby is the sum of the engineering field using vesicle, but not broadly. Mm. So we believe that really diminish the impact of the, this the lipid vesicle research. Uh, so uh, therefore, we recently developed a new way of actually seeing or assemble the uh, biomimetic or bio-inspired biomembrane by the few click mm -hmm. of or few step of pipetting because in the biologist, they're using pipette and mix the solution together and so on. So we mimic those methods and we demonstrate that we are able to assemble lipid to lipid bilayer directly, not forming to the vesicle assembly to fuse on the surface. Mm. So that's the way of effort we actually bring uh, for the uh, big impact or help for the biologists coming to this uh, surface science field. And then other thing, in, in generally in the future, what we want to do is we do the biomaterial engineering, uh, biomembrane engineering, and so on. So we want to move in this field to the, in, in general, concept of a lipid. So we are take a looking into the uh, secret of a plant, which is we using a lot of uh, uh, pollen-based biomaterial, okay. try to mimic those property into the system. So we are working on it. And for instance, we using this pollen particle, which is diamond of the polymer, very durable and biocompatible and no resistance with the human body to using that as a drug delivery system. So we encapsulate the drug mm -hmm. and deliver to the body. That is the one of the other research we believe is very exciting and emerging research area. Okay. So a lot of interesting work going on. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, it's very interesting to learn uh, about how surface science and your engineering perspective can be uh, used to address some of these global health issues that we are facing. Cancer, viral outbreaks. Um, so good luck with all of your project. So that's all we had for today. Thanks for listening to this episode of Science on Surfaces, a bigger perspective on the small. With me, Marlene Edvardsson. And I'm Jun Cho, Nanyang uh, Associate Professor at the School of Material Science and Engineering uh, at Nanyang Technolo Technological University in Singapore. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>